if it does some for God, some reason like does not work out for us, worry about the scrutiny I will receive from your followers. Loser. I know what you're thinking liquor. I just I met her. Who said, I love you first. I didn't do that. I was not, that was not me. My mom would never have let me do that. Sounds lame. Sis. I've probably spent over a hundred thousand dollars. What? I'm held to a different standard because I am Miss Texas. <laughs> You're a pretty little baby. We sucked face for a solid, it was a classy makeout. You're a goofy goober. You're a goofy goob. What are your thoughts on kids and marriage? Cut that out. Can you bleep that? Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Don't Be Sour, episode number five. I am your host, Max, tuning in today. Today, 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 we have, this might be the best, the best one that we're ever going to get into because I am sitting here with my beautiful other half, my girlfriend, Miss mm. Taylor Kessler. Hello and welcome to the show. Hi. Now, this is going to be a little <laughs> bit different because... I know a lot about you. We've been dating for an amazing six months as of yesterday. Six months and? Six months and a day. Yeah, going on seven, woo! <laughs> so uh, the flow of this is gonna be slightly different than the normal because I know pretty much everything about you, but I wanna dive in a little bit. Okay. And some of the questions I'm gonna ask you, hopefully you're not like, Max, you already know the answer to that. Uh, you're just gonna explain it as if I don't. That's fine. It's an it's also an easy out. So then, if I forgot the answer, if you're like you Max already told it, yes, absolutely. Um, but as you know, you watch the show, right? Yes. Right. So you know, we start every episode with a little shot. Tonight, we have uh, we're gonna try to switch up the alcohols each time because we're just crazy. We have eight one eight tequila blanco from Kylie Jenner. Kendall. I think it's Kylie. It's Kendall. No, I it's think Kendall. Kendall's the one with all the lipstick stuff, right? I'm offended. Mm, we'll just agree to disagree. But this is a celebrity tequila. Now I've actually had this, but I had the the the, the brown one. The Reposado. Yeah, but there's two. There's a dark brown one and like a not as dark it's like brown more one. More like golden brown. Mm, something like that. I don't know. I had it. Tasted like ass. So why is mine bigger? Well, because I'm trying to get you sloshy. I don't know if I'm ready. Want. Okay. Cheers. No chaser. <coughs> <coughs> that was lovely. Why do they all taste like ass? That tastes great. You know, you, you go down the aisle of liquor stores. Yeah. I know what you're thinking liquor, I just <laughs> met her. But you go down the aisle and there's so many options. Yeah. I, you get overwhelmed. But I mean, I guess when you have like the massive following, I'm sure this is doing super, super amazing. It's but for girls like me that love Kendall, just one, it's like the it girl tequila. Like mm. Costa Migos is out, eight one eight in. No, it's not really out, but it's like not. The I, I, I wish I had an out brand that would just got acquired for a billion dollars. That's true. Must be bad to have an out brand, you know what I'm saying? But to be honest, like th this tastes like every other tequila I've ever had in my entire life. I think Casamigos is like a little smoother. Doesn't have much of a bite as 818 does. Mm, I think it's all literally the exact same stuff, but you know, okay. whatever. We'll just agree to disagree. Okay. Um, Actually, so I want to switch this up a little bit because yeah. I, want, I want the whole show to just, you you just tell me why, I'm, why you like me so much and go. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, can I, can I borrow the list? <laughs> <laughs> no. I know you brought me a list of things, <laughs> but there's a million things, we'll be here forever. I know, I know. gosh, she's so sweet. Oh you my try. gosh. So I like to start each episode mm -hmm. with kind of a little bit of like, what, what do you do for work as if you're in an Uber? So what is your Uber pitch, Uber driver? You're going to a, uh, uh, somewhere. I'm going somewhere. You're going somewhere and then they go, howdy ma'am, what do you do for work? Well, technically when I'm in an Uber, I normally like don't talk to them, but I'll answer your question. Um, I kind of just go off saying that I do social media and I kind of explain how I just create content. I help post and come up with feed like with the company I'm working with right now, which is Shaftel Diamonds in Houston. It's a jewelry store. I work with their PR team, just kind of coming up with what they want for their feed to look like. That's pretty much their main source of advertising. And then I help them plan all of their parties and events that go hand in hand. But I'm also a model. So the model comes at the end. Yeah, I don't really like to say that I'm a model because one, people view me as like a shallow human, but it's also, I mean, it is one of my bigger like sources of income. I love it, but I just, I don't know. I, people get weird when they're like, oh, like you model. 
So what, what do you what do you respond to that when someone says like, oh, you model like what kind of model? I just explained to them I'm signed to an agency. It's really just e-commerce work, things like that, whatever I can get into. Um, my job is very versatile when it comes to modeling. I can do anything. You can do anything. And I support you doing anything. Thanks. <laughs> but, I, you know, I'm, I'm being a model. Yeah. You're kind of uh, underplaying your m model, m m your, your, you're underplaying how, how big of a model you are because yeah. you have some huge accolades. Would that be the, yeah. the right, right word? I work with very large companies, but I just, I don't know. No, who who are you, Taylor? Oh. Tell people who you are. <laughs> oh, Miss Texas 2020, is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I that kind of slips my mind. It slips your mind that you won <laughs> Miss Texas? It's not the first thing I explain to people. Because again, I get judged for being Miss Texas USA. And you won that in what year? 2020. Well, technically I won in 2019, Labor Day weekend 2019, but I am technically Miss Texas 2020. Miss Texas. What a title. Yeah. That's a, so I want to, we're going to get to the Miss Texas yes. part of your journey, but why don't you take us, take us back. I don't need to, you know, know, you know, when your mom met your dad, but I, I want to know kind of your backstory yeah. getting into modeling. Okay. So it's something I've always wanted to do. Um, if you knew me as a child, I was the kid that was always doing performances or doing things for my parents. I would make my sister, like, and I would do random little photo shoots. So it's something I've always wanted to do. And it kind of went along with competing in pageants. My dream when I was three years old was to beat Miss Universe. How do you remember your because dream when you were three? Because I have a great memory, but my mother will tell you the same thing. Like we, it's our tradition to watch Miss USA and Miss Universe. And I told her, I would point at the screen and be like, I want to be Miss Universe one day. And she's like, sure, Taylor. Like, you don't even wash your hair. Like, there's no way. You didn't wash your hair as a kid? No. Wait, I thought swimming was showering. When you're when you're three? Yeah. I don't even think you can talk when you're three. So you just- <laughs> Yes, you can. You said, mom, one day I want to be a, a beauty pageant queen. Yeah. No, I, I think at three, I think three you can you start her. learning how to talk. No, you can ask her. She'll tell you. I wanted to be Miss Universe at the age of three. So this was ingrained from- the beginning of and, my life. I had my whole life planned. Why did, I mean, I, I feel like, I don't know if it's just like me associating it with like little girls and maybe like Barbies and, and, the, princesses, and the, yeah, yeah, princesses, but like, why did that come into your life as a kid? Was that something that your mom did or your mom was no. like, had this vision for you? No, God, no. She my like, like held you up and you're like, <laughs> you're a pretty little baby. <laughs> no, my mom does think I'm a pretty little baby, but that's no, she did not want me to get into pageants whatsoever. Um, it was kind of new for us. I was the first kid in our family to get into modeling and pageants. And she was terrified. She did not want it for now, me. When I think of three-year-olds getting into pageants, I think of the show. <laughs> Toddlers what? and Tiaras? Yeah. And I see, oh, God, I no. See I, the... I didn't do that. I was not. That was not me. My mom would never have let me do that. So that was your dream as a three-year-old. Yes. And then when did it? When did you first start taking action into the modeling world? Um, modeling, I would say middle school. I went to do this competition with Paige Parks Modeling Agency and I won and then it just kind of built up from there and then I stopped kind of that path because of volleyball and my sports and everything I was doing in school. It wasn't my main focus and then in high school when I started competing again, the doors to modeling just kind of swung right open and I just took off from there. Why did, why did you feel like you had a... Uh, like some people, when they play a sport, they're yeah. like, I'm really good at volleyball. I'm going to keep playing volleyball. It, with modeling, how do you know that you're really good besides everyone? I would like to think that everyone thinks they're like the most attractive person in the I world. I didn't though. No? No, I still don't. I do. I well, think, thank you. Yeah. But I, I want to know like, so, but at what point were you like, hey, I, I have a shot at this. I think because I don't look like anybody else. I'm very unique. So whenever I do photo shoots, one of the guys that I work with, Fidel, he's one of my favorite photographers I've ever worked with. He's always like, I can't put a pinpoint of what you are, who you are. He's like, what I love is that I can make you anything. I can make you whatever culture, whatever kind of image I'm going for. I can create you into that image, which is what a model technically is. And so I was just very unique looking growing up. And I obviously I'm tall and very lanky. <laughs> and so it just you kind of, a little, I'm a little tall. So it just kind of worked in that aspect. and. I found it just something that pushes me to like mentally be better, 
mentally just be stronger, but it's also like physically I had to be a certain way. So it just kind of kept me along the line of what I wanted to be. So, so since you were so getting into modeling, did Mm -hmm. that kind of shift of, I can't do these normal things in my earlier childhood because I need to focus on my modeling. So whether that be getting like a typical, I don't know, like no. high, high school job or something. Did you, did I you, still did all of that. What did you do when you were a kid? Well, I had multiple jobs, but the first one, my first job I ever had was I worked at Sweet and Sassy, which you probably don't know what that is, but it's like a Libby Lou back in the day. It's like a birthday girls, like little girls party place. And so I would dance with them, sing with them, do their hair and makeup. Um, I was on cake duty at one point, so I'm really good at cutting cakes now. It's like my my trick. You're my good punch. at cutting cakes? Oh, there's a proper way to cut like a three-tiered cake. Yeah, you just take the knife, you no, slide it down. There's like a proper way to do it, and I can do it now. It's like my talent. Look at that. Everyone listening is that they no one knew party that tricks. There was a proper way. Okay. There is, there is. But um, so that and then um later down the road, you're gonna hate it, and the world probably will hate it. But I was a front girl desk at a tanning salon. Ah. I knew you it's, it's not he doesn't like that I tan, but yeah. It's not good for you. I know it's not. But at that time, we didn't know that. They didn't know that it was bad for you then either? That was back in the Dizzy day. Okay. And then I, right. pl- I coached volleyball as well. So you did all these things while still modeling on mm-hmm. the side. And mm-hmm. then were you able to pursue it as a, this is still super serious? Or were you like, hey, I like modeling. I, I, I have these, all these other jobs. I kind of do it on the side. Yeah. Or when was the point where you're like, I need to put more focus in it? Or when did modeling start taking up more of your time than just kind I of like a side? I would say college just started taking up more of my time. It was kind of like my main focus. My parents, my dad, my mother would let me do whatever. She was like, if you want to sign to an agency and wait for college, then yes. My dad was very focused on me going to college, getting an education. Right. And I can say I did not like college. I hated it. What? I, I did not want to be there. I'm just, that's just not my style. I mean, I love education. I love learning, but I had aspirations and, you know, at modeling, like you have to sign very young. I unfortunately did not, but I mean, you now it's, you can be older and model, which is great. When, when, at what age did you start making any, like what, you, what was your first paid modeling gig and how much did you make? <laughs> 17 and I made 2500 $2,500? I thought you were going to say $25. <laughs> no. 2500 Yeah. Wow. Yeah. For like how, like what, what kind of shoot was it? What, what it was, was the I worked for Sherry Hill. Back then that's, you can still work for them. I still work for them. I'm their longest person. and I've been with them for 10 years. You know, sometimes that's like embarrassing. Like I, I worked at this pharmacy when I was a kid. And I know. <laughs> everyone, everyone usually works there for like three or four years. I worked there for seven. And they're like, Max, why are you still here? And no, I'm like part of the family now. Right? They've literally seen me through all the stages of life thus far. Um, I technically know everything about the brand. I started off with like homecoming prom, like which is what she did in couture for pageants. And now I do couture and bridal. Is that like juicy couture? No. It's mm. like couture dresses that we wear in pageants, designer brand. Okay, so you started making money at 17. You started modeling way before that, but that was just, I'm just- It's like, it wasn't what it is now. Okay, so you started making money and that's probably the first time you were like, I, this could be a big deal for me, right? Yeah. So then when did you start on your path to ultimately get to the Miss Texas? Uh, like before, before we super dive into yeah. the Miss Texas, like, like I guess, what is the preliminaries to My, that? Um, so I competed at Texas Teen USA. Um, when I was 17, my mom was like at 16, she was like, you can compete if you want to. So I competed for Miss Houston. I had a month to prepare and you're going to notice this kind of trend of what I do when I compete. I sign up very last minute. Mm -hmm. I decide to compete very last minute. Um, So I had no idea what I was doing. I was like 17 when I was like really into it. Um, The first pageant I did, I got second runner up, which is technically like third place and yeah like, why do they why do they call it that i don't makes know you feel better like no first runner up elder why don't they just say second place i don't know it's just because like if something happens if something happens to the girl or she loses her title or she wins the next title going forward technically the runner up is the person that will 
like assume her title in case one of the moms like breaks the legs of the first place winner <laughs> pageant moms are crazy <laughs> I, <I've> <laughs> i'm it. like i could tell you some stories I've, I've seen the shows they're insane so yeah if something like that happens so if you get first place they're like do not walk down any stairs unless you're with me do <laughs> yeah. not walk down any alleyways because someone's going to <laughs> somebody's coming for <laughs> yeah, you at all times just gonna cut cut your face just enough to make you yeah uh, technically crazy. okay so you started your journey in miss texas now kind of explain uh, in a short format like yes. what is miss texas how do you get there and why do people want to be miss texas which obviously there's there's miss every state there is all 50 states including dc so there's 51 titles okay but um so miss texas it is the most prestigious title that you could have i can tell you that you can win any other state and it's probably texas will be the hardest state to win because it's just there's so many girls and they're all beautiful there's so much competition there's also we are the like number one in how many wins we have um nine girls i have one miss usa and we have one girl that's one miss universe and that's the most out of all states titles that have one is texas but being miss texas obviously if i want to be miss universe i have to compete for miss texas and then go on to miss usa win miss usa and then hopefully if you win that title you assume that position you go on to compete for miss universe so it's all kind of like a stepping stone to where you want to go but growing up watching the pageants, you learn a lot about these women and they're not just beautiful women that walk across a stage in a gown and swimsuit. They have an interview portion where they have to talk to judges for two minutes at a time with two different panels and they fire questions like at you about yourself, politics, anything going on in the world. And you find that these girls aren't just beautiful. They are intelligent. They have careers. They have stories. They have backgrounds. We also have platforms that we work with that we care about. So with me, my platform was domestic violence and sexual assault awareness. But I worked with many other organizations amongst that because philanthropy is kind of my pride. It's like my, what I love the most. It gives right. me fire and fuel and we've talked about that before a little bit but it's kind of what fuels me and that's what these girls do like we have so much more than just being beautiful and i i loved that but pageants in itself is just a mental competition yeah and so i loved it and so you said that texas has the most amount of competitors wins. Right? Yes. and, and compet yeah and wins, wins. How, how many how many or so they don't have the most amount of competitors oh no we do you do so how many how many other girls did you compete against from from my year day one um the most I've ever competed against was like 132. Is that for Miss Texas? I'm for Miss Texas. So there's 132 girls, girls competing against me. What? And yeah. you won? And I won. You and deserve I, it. Man. Thank you. I mean, I had a month to prepare when I won Miss Texas. Okay. I signed up literally last minute. And you talked about the process of modeling of, yeah. of pageant stuff. Yes. Because a lot of, I, I think pageants and maybe just modeling in general probably mm -hmm. has a, a bad stigma of you win because you're pretty yeah. you win you know because because of your looks yes and, and what do you kind of say to that to, to people who like I, think that's the only thing i definitely am not the prettiest girl that's competed at miss texas like liar no i swear but like i i could literally look at anybody that competes at miss texas or miss usa or miss universe and there are some of i i have to say like some of the most beautiful women i've ever seen but it's so much more than that because a pretty face only gets you so far you have to be able to hold conversations with people older than you people younger than you people your age people that are from other cultures you have to understand like how to handle yourself in certain situations and scenarios you're now a diplomat basically for your state and then beyond that just the country as well because people look to you to share your opinion share your voice and your message and what you believe in and it's just a lot more than what it is why do you think you won i okay so we call this thing the halo and it's just this yeah, Beyonce kind of, sings about it. Yeah, yeah she yeah. does. She does. Okay. But it's just this glow that you have when you're on stage and you can watch all my videos when I won. It's just, I had this kind of glow about me and I think it's because I signed up last minute. And when I signed up, I just wanted to go out there. I had just broken my back like months before that. And I wasn't even supposed to be competing, but I did. And I just was relaxed. I was calm. I was the most calm I've ever been. And I didn't care about anybody else beside me. Like I did not worry about the girls I was competing with. I didn't worry about, well, she has a great job. She's like a NASA scientist. Like I didn't care. I just wanted to be there and do my best. And I had fun. 
But I also, when I go in an interview, I always say, I was like, I don't want it to be like an interview. I want to have a conversation with somebody. I want to like connect with the people I'm speaking to. Plus I'm a very big goofball when you really get to know me. And so when you see that person, like that personality come out, but I can also be serious. I think it shows that I'm pretty much prepared to move forward as Miss USA. And when we compete, my director, she would always tell the judges, she's like, I want you to find me in Miss Universe. And if you can't find me in Miss Universe, you need to find me in Miss USA. And if you can't find me in Miss USA, then find me the best Miss Texas that you can find. And if you can't find that, then I'm doing something wrong. But that was the thing. Like when I won, they were like, you're ready for Miss Universe. Like you can go. I've been told that for years. That was like my mental state was like, you're Miss Universe ready. Just go, go, go. So I think I just was, it's like perfect timing. I was calm. I was yeah. ready. I was set. I was mentally there. It's the strongest I've ever been mentally. And I was just at peace. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you, I guess everyone else was, I guess, so anxious to, mm-hmm. to win and everyone wants to win, Yeah. but maybe you had a more relaxed approach to it. And that kind of sh- shown, shined, shined through, through. <laughs> shine through to the judges of yeah. like, you just were very natural in what you're doing. Yeah. It just comes very natural to me. It's like my second home now at here, this place. Here's the question. Yeah. Now I know when they, when they announced the winner, yes, they, they're holding, they're holding hands with, yeah. with so the I, other girl. Yes. Right. And then they announce the, the, I guess the loser, the, the second first, runner up, first, first runner, runner up, up, right? First. Yes. So then that triggers to make, you know, first yeah. place know who, who won. At that moment, did you think you won? <laughs> I did. Yeah? Yeah. I loved my first runner up, but I just had this feeling. It was, so I'm a big numbers person and I'm very superstitious. So it was my third year competing for Miss Texas. I was called third, like the third person for top 15. And then I was called third again for top five. So it's three, three, three. That's like a lucky angel number. So it means you're on the right path. Mm. And so I was like, you know, it's perfect timing. Do I wish I would have won later? Like if I would have waited a couple of years to compete? Yes, absolutely. But I think it was my time. I think I was meant to be the COVID queen. I was Miss Texas for two years, which that's never happened. I'm the longest title holder in all of history of the world, which is crazy. Nice. I'm in the history books, but it's just, it was meant to happen when it happened. Well, I like it. I like the confidence. I think everyone should be confident when they're doing a competition, yeah. right? Um, so after you win, like you get, you're supposed to get the title for a year, obviously with yes. COVID that extended it, yeah. right? Um, so what do you win? Like what, what happens after you win? So you get a lot. You're basically just kind of thrusted into this position of going to different events. So I had a lot of media, a lot of news preparation. I went on tons of interviews for television, but you're ultimately getting prepared for Miss USA, which is like the next step in like what you're doing. And so getting ready for Miss USA, it just kept getting pushed off. So I was the first girl that won the title that year. So I was waiting. So I had to wait a whole like another six months for the other girls to win. And then COVID happened. Right. And they were like, we don't know if we're going to have Miss USA this year. We don't know what's going to happen. So they just kept pushing it off, pushing it off, pushing it off. And you're just going to events. I worked with my philanthropy. So I went and spoke to college students and high school students about um, dating violence and talking to them about like consent and sexual violence and my thing was called coffee talk. So it was like having a conversation about sex should be as easy as ordering coffee. It's very weird. We'll have to get into it another time, but it was just kind of snowballed off of that. But I also was just a representative of Texas. So anything that I could do with the government or anything I could do with certain organizations that I worked with, I just had to go to events and just be So it it just opens up a lot of doors for you as a public figure. Yes. Do Do you win any money? No. You don't want any money. How much do, and you have to We spend, don't get paid. You have to spend a lot of money. Oh. <laughs> How much does it cost to ballpark from like, I want to enter this Miss Texas all the way up to like, you I, I'm can, con- you can, I'm the top. You can do it in a way that you don't spend a lot of money. How much did you spend? Total? Yeah. <laughs> God. Tell the, um, tell the people. The year I won Miss Texas? No, I'm talking or about like, like, like I'm entering I'm Miss prob- Texas. I've probably spent over $100,000. From entering Miss Texas from the to f- I won? To, from the first time I ever competed. No, I'm talking about Miss Texas. Oh, from when I won Miss, like yeah. the year we're, we're, I won. We're only in Miss Texas right now. I, um, like well, because I signed up a month before Miss Texas, like because I wasn't supposed to be competing. Right. Um, I didn't spend as much as normal people do. Right. No, but I, I would say for me, it was about... 
$30,000. $30,000 to compete. And then you win. It doesn't have to Nothing. be. Nothing. It doesn't have to be like that, but you don't, you get a lot of sponsors. I got a lot right. of things throughout the years, which okay. was great. But, but in, com- terms- in terms of competing, like my gown was 10,000. What? And you wear it for 10 minutes. It's my pride and joy. Oh. I love my yellow gown. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so quite expensive. You don't win any, any money, Mm-mm. but you win a lot of exposure, which turns into money. Yes. Right. And so after, after the, the Miss Texas, you went on, you tried, did you try to compete? I and competed for Miss USA. And did not win. I did not win, which I think it's God's plan, God's timing, which is great. But you know, it's very political and they have a type that they want to win each year, whether it be her story, her background, what her platform is. Um, and I just wasn't meant for me to happen at that time. And I'm very thankful because I, I kind of opened my doors to modeling even more after that. Okay. And I wouldn't have been able to do so if I was Miss USA. Okay. So because that door kind of, we'll say closed, just that yeah. your journey beyond Miss Texas, um, so what, what was your kind of goal after after you were like, I'm not doing this Miss USA, USA Miss Universe, Miss Galaxy, Miss, it was Miss Solar U- System? <laughs> so you know? Miss USA, Miss Universe. Okay. Um, it was just kind of maintaining my title, doing as many events as I could because I still had about a uh, almost a year to be right. Miss Texas because it was still postponed. So I still had time to keep going. And so I was like, I'm going to do as many events as possible. I'm going to get my name there out there as many, as much as possible. And so that's what I really focused on. And then I got into modeling. That's when I started modeling for Buff Bunny. I started working with a larger agency. Um, I kind of set my eye on the goal that I want in this next year, which right. is what I'm really focused on. Um, and just preparing myself for that and then getting signed to New York in New York and Miami is like the next huge thing for me. So being Miss Texas, do you think that can, so for example, you know, now you're a public figure yes. after you, you win this, yes. you know, I like to consider myself a public figure as well. Now I can act like a like complete jackass at all times. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of just part of my brain. I can be like truly who I am and yes. no one can really be like, oh my God, he's acting so ridiculous. It's just like, that's just Max, right? You, do you feel like you had to like reserve yourself a lot because you had this title? Yes. Even after, even after, even after still to this day, I'm held to a different standard because I am Miss Texas. I can't be like one of those Instagram girls that starts an OnlyFans. I can't, I can't do that. That's just not the Miss Texas title. We're very conservative. I'm definitely the opposite of any Miss Texas. I'm very edgy and very out there. I'm just kind of like the non pageanty pageant girl with like Miss Texas is like this perfect human in my mind. She's like this perfect girl, never has a hair out of place. She's just beautiful, smart, intelligent, can speak to anybody. And I, I am that. Wait, the perfect model never has a hair out of her out of place. Perfect Miss Texas. Miss Te- that's crazy. Yes. It and that's a lot not of hairspray. Me. Lots of hairspray. The higher the hair, the closer to God, you know, but it was not me. I was the opposite of what Miss Texas was at the time, which I think was good for the brand. It right. needed to evolve in that kind of way. I was very edgy. I was very outspoken. So which, the so the further you drift away from Miss Texas, mm-hmm. I know that's always gonna be like a, a, a elite, elite title yeah. that you have. Do you feel like you've opened up a little bit more in terms of allowing yourself to yes. maybe post yourself drinking alcohol, yes. probably? Because I'm oh, sure yeah. I used to like be terrified. Like I'm 25 and I was not allowed to like post a picture with a drink in my hand. I couldn't be sitting next to this bottle. Like I was terrified. I I didn't want anything to be taken out of context. You couldn't do like any keg stands. Oh God, no, no. I've never done a keg stand. I will never do a keg stand. I just hold myself to a higher standard. Hey, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. I won't say it's do what you want. Like if I could do it, then sure. But as of now, no. Okay. So, so then you kind of just expanded into modeling, which is Mm -hmm. what you do now as a a big part of your income, right? So, so modeling, um, is, like a huge part of what you do and mm-hmm. you do on a consistent basis. Taylor travels all the time. She, I'm gone I, every week. <laughs> she either is constantly has modeling jobs or she has a secret second life that I don't know about because she's always, what was that look? <laughs> what was that look? She gave a look. I don't have a secret life. <laughs> you so, are my life. So, oh my God. So <laughs> modeling is this big thing. So it's it's still a large source of income. Yeah. Can, can you tell the people, because I don't think a lot of people don't understand modeling. Like what's, what's the lowest paid shoot you've ever done and what is the highest paid photo shoot you've ever done? I've done a shoot for zero dollars. 
that's pretty low. That's very low, but that's what and you the have company to do. was uh, named Ever Forward and Sour, <laughs> Sour Strips. <laughs> yes, technically, I actually no, have. No, I'm, I'm talking about. I'm serious. Like, not, no, like not, I really the no, no. The, the lowest paid shoot I've ever done was zero dollars. Correct. That would actually be the lowest because it's zero. <laughs> I'm asking, like, w- what is something that what's maybe you have an expect, like, for example, I work with a lot of brands, right? Yes. I had this kind of threshold of, of, if I don't make this X dollar, I'm it not depends, gonna work with this though. brand. We can, cause I can get paid hourly or I could do a daily rate. Okay. And then you also have your usage fees of how long they're gonna use those photos, what they use them for. And so beyond that, it depends on each contract, what you're gonna do, what you're gonna get. So for certain brands, my fee is no less than a thousand dollars. Okay. For like a day. Okay. But my certain brands that pay me a hundred dollars, a hundred fifty for an hourly rate, and I I have like a minimum hour, which and, gets but, me to a point. But because you have an agency, they take a cut of that, right? They take those, a nice little those chunk. Blood sucking agencies. No, I love them. They give me everything. Mm-hmm. I'm very thankful for so them. So what's that? What's the highest paid shoot you've ever done? For like, let's say like one job. For not, a day? I'm not talking about like a month campaign. I'm talking no, about- No, a day? Just A what, day shoot. Sure, a day, a weekend, like just, uh, like the, when you got this shoot, you were like, oh my God, mom, <laughs> I'm bringing in bank on this. Janice, I'm bringing in the cash. You don't say the company, but like what's the highest dollar amount? 5,000. Woo! For a day. Dang. Makes little modeling very easy, but it also, you don't know when you're gonna get paid. Yeah. That's probably the biggest so that's struggle, like right? the stress of it. That's why I have other jobs. That's why I do social media for so many other companies is because you never know when you're gonna get paid from like these companies. What is the, I guess, you know, in the perfect model pageant yeah. girls world, what do you think the the goal or the expectation is? Like I've won this now, like, like, like what is, what would be the ultimate goal if you wanted to continue with modeling to make modeling your career? Like, like what is the, the pinnacle, the top? Sign to a larger agency and sign worldwide is to be the best is to sign worldwide, but you still cannot, I could still make more money doing what I'm doing now than being signed to like elite worldwide or like the larger agencies, but that's the goal. The goal is to be signed to the top five agencies, but also to be in with some of the largest brands, whether it be a face of the brand or to be a part of a campaign. Right. For me personally, my goal, like the epitome of where I want to be for modeling is to be the cover Sports Illustrated. Mm. Mm. Okay. And it's gonna happen. I'm I'm manifesting that. Who is who is your favorite model top like top model of all time? Kate Moss. Kate Moss. Which is why I was offended when you didn't know who she was. I still don't really know who Kate Moss is. But do you think that the top models, the way that they got there is they established because you know them by name. It's not just like this beautiful girl that I yeah. see all the time. It's right. So do you think that building your name up yes. besides just I'm super pretty? I'm, you know, I have won all these pageants. That, that's why so much, you know, is entwined with being a model is because it's it's beyond just looks because, you know, that's what I think a lot of girls who maybe get into mm-hmm. modeling jobs, they think that it's gonna be like forever. But at the end of the day, it's like, a, it's, it's, it's sad reality that there's always gonna be another pretty face. And yeah. in, until you're kind of an established name, that's how you truly grow, mm-hmm. right? Um, and with Kate Moss, would you consider her a, Supermodel. She is the one of the first supermodels. Okay, can you explain the difference between a model and a supermodel? A supermodel is somebody that's a household name. So she, they don't have any powers. They don't have any powers besides being the most beautiful, well-known model there is. How do you get from being a model to a supermodel? You're the highest paid model and you're in every single campaign that you could think of. So think of our supermodels now, which are happening, which are like Kendall Jenner, Gigi Hadid, Bella Hadid. Those are like your three top well-known supermodels. Yes, some of them are known for other things, but- Wait, Kendall Jenner? Kendall Jenner. She's a, she's she's a top supermodel? She's the number one paid model in the entire world. Yeah, but that's because she's a Jenner. No, she's like well paid, like multi, multi, multi million just to be in shoots. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying like, do you think that she's a supermodel because she went through the struggles of being a model or do you think that like being a Jenner was what I ca- think catapulted being, her? I think being a Jenner helped her obviously, but just because you have a title and a name at that point when she first started, people didn't take her seriously. Models, like no one took her seriously, but now she's walking the biggest runways and the largest campaigns. And she's one of the most well-known names in modeling. It's not easy. 
especially when you have that pressure on you to be a certain way. She, they're like, oh, it's Kendall Jenner. She's yeah. a Kardashian sister. It makes it harder. And and so life after, to kind of wrap up the, the model talk here, mm -hmm. life after modeling, what do you see a lot of models do after? Do you think a lot of models like hold on to this? I was this this title, I, I, I did this thing and, and they keep trying to kind of like grab for this they, they want to continue yeah. to be a model forever. Do you, do you think that being a model is a realistic life thing? Or do you think that the best way to go about winning these titles is to take what you did, like learn from it yes. as, as evolve as a person and then use that to expand into another career? Like how many models do you know that have won a huge title that have continued on to do nothing but modeling for the rest of their life? Or do, Not they, many. Or do they all go into something else? It, most go into something else, but branding is important branding is everything that's something i teach when i work with girls for pageants i was like yes i am miss texas usa but i'm also taylor kessler and that's my brand that's important because at the end of the day i'm only miss texas well i was miss texas for two years but i'm only miss texas for a year you have to look past the title and what this title can do for you your opportunities whether it be modeling walk, walking pageants whatever it is that you're doing you look past that because that's a minuscule amount of what you're doing. Right. This is just to catapult you to the next thing. So for me, being Miss Texas was just, my goal obviously was everything to me. It means the world to what I want to be and who I am, but that's not my end opportunity. I think I have so much more that's in store that is way cooler. Well, no, yeah. I can't say that Miss Texas was pretty cool, but I just have a lot of things that I can do now if, because I've worked on my brand. If you never got into modeling, mm -hmm. what do you think you'd be doing right now? My dream job was to be a sports broadcaster and I did it. I did it for a while and then I just didn't love it. So I think I would probably be doing entertainment news. Really? I love speaking, I love talking. That's one of my favorite things is to get to know people. People are what fuel me. So I would probably do entertainment news. E news would be the goal. Do you think if that didn't work out, you would ever want to be on a game show? Because you actually are right now. Oh no! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the mid break. Don't be sour game show. Uh, if you don't know about this, what we do is we're going to ask you a couple of trivia questions. I'm going to change it up for you because I've, I've lost every single one. The way it works, I'm going to ask you a couple of different questions. The loser, t if you don't get it right, you have to take a shot. If you get it right, I have to take a shot. Now in, in the, the four episodes we filmed up to this one, uh, the, the person has got them right every single time, but I have a good feeling. I, I got a feeling you're going to lose on this. So the first one's going to be a rapid fire. I'm actually going to ask you rapid fire. Yeah. I'm going to ask you six questions about me. You need to get four of the six right. Max, I'm sweating. <laughs> God, okay. Okay, gotta get four of them right. Ready? First question, what color are my eyes? Hazel, more green though. <laughs> that is correct. I can't believe you got <laughs> Okay, what is my birthday? September 9th, 1989. You are a Virgo. What is my mom's name? First name? Deborah. <laughs> How tall am I? You're 5'10". I like to say he's 5'11", because I think he's a little taller. Hey, if you get the next, <laughs> you have to get the next two wrong for me to get this, for me to not lose. What is my middle name? Colton. <laughs> okay, what is my favorite movie? Dumb and Dumber. And for the bonus of that question, quote something from my favorite movie. I'm running at an incredible rate. <laughs> it feels like you're running at an incredible rate. <sighs> okay, uh, you got all of them. I'll Correct. take a shot with you. No, no, no. There's no pity shots here. It's not pity. Okay? It's a it's a girlfriend thing. No, no, no. What's yours is mine and what's mine is mine. Yeah, she keeps saying that. I don't know what that You means. said it too. Okay, so I have the first shot. Now the second one, Taylor, I need you to close your eyes. Squeeze them, okay? Squeeze them. No, no, no. I need your hands, but just <laughs> squeeze your eyes. Okay, I have- Are you putting a bug in my hand? Yes. <gasps> no. <laughs> it's a trouser snake. What's a trouser snake? <laughs> <laughs> Keep Ew. your eyes closed. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put a sour strip in your hand. I need you to, to eat it and tell me what flavor it is. Just a little bite. It doesn't matter what you want to do. Yep. We have three of these. Mango. Mango. Okay. <laughs> All right. Set that one down. Wait. Nope. That was your, that was your guess? No. No, you're changing your guess. I'm changing my guess. We need to hurry up. Okay. This game show Watermelon. doesn't go to... Okay. Okay. Number two. I'm just going to give you a little piece of it. What flavor is number two? Blue raspberry. Okay. Sour. And number three. Wait, no. Pink lemonade. I got that aftertaste. Okay, she has changed her answer. 
<laughs> I got the aftertaste. Number three. Here we go. Strawberry. Motherfucker, man. <laughs> Did you bring your eyes open? No. You're a goofy goober. You're a goofy goob. Okay. Ugh. I'll take a shot with you. No, actually, you know what? There's no second guesses. I forgot to mention that. It was in the rules. I wrote it down here. No okay. second guesses. So that means you got two of them wrong. You lose. Here we go. Okay. Take that. F you. We're not supposed to say that until the end of the episode. Oh, cut that out. Can you bleep that? Thank you. Love you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Things the nostrils. Mm. Yeah, that's a great chaser. That's a good one. That was good. It was a sour tip, right? Okay. It's Hey Tay Binks. Yeah. Now that we've kind of dove into you, now I want to dive into us. Hell yeah. It's my favorite topic. How did we meet? And I want you to explain this, and I want I want the long version. You want the long version? Because you always say, that's not how we met. Th this is the Taylor edition. The Taylor edition. Welcome to my story. I need some background music to roll through. Whether, whether or not this is the correct edition. It's the correct edition. So Max and I have met multiple times. They're very quick pass bys, but one of them I did not remember until my best friend Paige reminded me, and that was my first photo shoot for Buff Bunny when I was outside during the rain shoot, if you don't remember. And it was like very quick. Alpha Land was not open yet. And it was like, this is Max. And I was like, hi. And then like literally walked by, that was it. And then we met a second time, which was at Bottled Blonde. Max was incoherent. Uh, if you guys don't know what incoherent means, it means I was belligerent hammered out of my mind. And if I was Mr. Texas, I couldn't, couldn't do that. Couldn't say that. I was hundred percent sober. But I'm Max Tuning. I can say whatever I want. Yes, you are. I was 100% sober. Sounds lame. And so when I met Max that time, he introduced himself again. I was like, hey, I'm Taylor. Hey, I'm, I'm Max. Nice and to I was meet just you. You're really pretty. I, no, you didn't say that. <laughs> I was just like, okay. Like mm -hmm. just kind of rubbed off by it. And so I didn't know. I thought you were just like this wacky, weird person. Okay, I want to, I want to interject real fast. So yes. th this is the before we. Th so this, this is, is like, like the. This is the like we we've we've met before, but we yeah. we, we didn't really communicate. Communicate with right. one. It was just like a hey type for now, the first time. Now something I want to interject here is when we first met. When, when she tells me the story of. Uh, Cause I forget that we met when she was doing the Buff Bunny photo yeah. shoot. We, it was a 30 second, like, Hey, this is Max. Hey, Not this is Taylor. Right? Interaction. It was just like, hi, bye. I always joke about that. Mm -hmm. And I say, I'm like, I, I bet, I bet then you were like, man, that guy is super cute. I'm going to like, <laughs> like I, I'm going to, I'm going to win him over one day. Right. I just kind of like a joke. I say that, but do you want to know what Taylor says every time when I make this kind of <laughs> joke? She, so at the time you were in a relationship. I was. And when I even joke about this, and this is this is one of the this is one of the many many reasons why I'm just head over heels with you is because of even your answer to this because it, it it like blew my mind because you said no I didn't think that because I was in a relationship and I wouldn't think I wouldn't even think about that and no. in my head I'm like Taylor I'm joking but you're like I, no why would I think that I'm in a relationship respect of a partner when I was in a relationship at that time I respected my partner wholeheartedly that person has every part of my heart so i was like i will never just in a relationship at that time like i'm loyalty runs deep in me like i will never look at another person or think oh this guy's cute oh this guy's attractive like i would never now but you say that but i think that's a kind of a stretch of the human nature just because you're in a relationship no there's still like you you could still be like that is an attractive person but i don't think about that i just don't care i mean i don't think, I think there's a difference of like romanticizing about being with the person. I mean, I, I mean, in the world I am in, I have to be around a million of attractive people. I'm feeling a little. You feeling a little saucy? <laughs> yeah, just a little. But I mean, I'm around attractive people, but for me, somebody that's attractive that I think is attractive is their personality. Cause there can be the hottest person or the most beautiful woman, but if they are not a good human wholeheartedly, right. I don't want any part of it. All right, so I'll, I'll get back to the story, but I just wanted to, to tell you guys yeah. that, but that, that, that is her answer. And every time I'm like, I'm like Taylor, I'm, I'm joking. It's a, it, was a, it was a joke and she's like, I don't care. I, I didn't think that. She, she never has played along with that ever. Didn't, like never was there like a, mm, mm, yeah, yeah, you wish, like maybe, like no. I thought you were cute. Like, because it's just who I am. Loyalty, loyalty is everything. Love that. You should be in like a gang because loyalty is very important there as well. <laughs> yeah, <Okay. laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay. I'm the gang Miss Texas. Okay, so continue continue the story. So I had known Max 
for a while and met him. I hadn't really hung out with him. I hadn't had a conversation with him. I have known girls that had gone on dates with him. Mm -mm. And it was not good from what I heard. So I had this pre-notion of Max. And so I just like didn't really care. I was also in a relationship at the time. So I didn't really care to get to know him as a person, like as a male. And like my circle didn't really like who, who I was at that time. That circle didn't really run deep with the y'all's group. Mm -hmm. I was still very close with Heidi and Paige and Mona. But besides that, like I didn't go out. I didn't drink really. I didn't do anything. Loser. No, I just, my relationship, I, I don't want to say I wasn't allowed to, but like it was frowned again. He was a loser. He was not a loser. All right, continue. So when did we meet? We met at Sholly's Anaka party, but it was at Christian and Heidi's house. We went to the pregame. This was this was the weekend before Halloween. The weekend before Halloween. And I was Megan Fox. It was like my little revenge costume. It looked really adorable. I had really great apps that day. And my job was to kill boys. And the only person there that looked like a normal human was Max. And Paige was like, Max will be the one in your photo shoot. And I said, sounds great. So she literally called you and was like, Max, you're taking a photo with Taylor. And Paige voice. That's, what, that's, actually, that's actually what she sounds like. That's crazy. I know. Yeah, so, so, so Paige called me over to do this photo. Now keep in mind, I'm dressed as Joe Dirt. <laughs> so she's looking fantastic as Megan Fox. Yeah. And I have- uh, A neck beard. I have a neck beard and, and like mutton chops and a mullet and j jean shorts. And a cut off flannel. And a mop. Yeah, I, I have. I don't think I had the mop at you that point. You didn't have yet. the mop in the picture. Okay, but so, but the, you call me over and yeah. and then you, we, we, we take this photo. Yes. And, and that was kind of our first interaction. I like choked you in the photo. Because I, I knew Taylor, I knew of you. I, yeah. I knew that you, you modeled for Buff Bunny. You always say, oh, she's the pretty model girl. Is that what I said? That's what you told me. I don't think I've ever said that. So I knew who Taylor was and she was just out at this party. Mm -hmm. this, is the this is the first time that Taylor really had ever come out into our group. And I didn't know at the time that she was either in or out of relationship. She was newly-ish out of relationship, a couple months. Few months. Few in. months. Um, so this was the first time I really got to interact with Taylor was at this party. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of like, I guess the, re the rest of the night we were just in the same group, right? We were in the same group. Um. <laughs> what? I don't, I don't know how far, I'm not going to go too far deep into that. Don't night. be sour. I'm not being sour. I'm just the least sour person here. I'm very sweet. I'm from Sugarland. Okay. But he, there was like certain boundaries that were not crossed that night because certain situations. Uh, what people need to understand. He had a girl here. I had, I had a date for the Halloween party. You did. I had, a, I had a date for the Halloween party. You did. So. Taylor and I that night. Literally, we're not like when I say we were not like talking, not trying to flirt with one. Everyone's always like Paige and Mona will say, oh my gosh, we're flirting. No, we were not. Th this was just the first time we ever really communicated. So it yeah. was more just like Taylor was just a girl in the group and she was like a new a, a new girl in the group. Like yes. th that's kind of my, my perception of you at the time. Cause I, I just, I never had like- I do have a video of you like with your arm around my neck and I don't understand why. She may make it sound bad. No, I I- Taylor basically invited me over for a shot, I believe. I don't. Mm. We, we were taking a shot. I think we were, but I don't think I invited so, you. You were with me. I, I remember Sholly being next to me. Okay. Because me, it was like Sholly, me. I want to say it was Anzi was with us. Okay. And like Mona was with me like the whole night. So we're all together and somehow we had this boomerang of me kind of with my arm like a, around her and like kind of smiling. Like and she's a little doing, peace time. Right. I was like, I was, I remember sending a Snapchat to somebody at the time because I had posted our photo and somebody like DM'd it to me and was like, oh, this is cute. It's a guy that liked me at the time. And I was like, we are just friends. Like absolutely not, not gonna happen. Like, please stop. He's probably never even seen Joe Dirt. Anyway. Probably not. <laughs> so that night was just Random. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then that, we that didn't even night, follow her. We didn't follow each other on right. social media at this point. So that night ended. Yeah. And then for and then for the next week, then Taylor came out again the next weekend, which was Halloween weekend. You guys joined our group. So Mona, Jessica, Paige, and I went out for Halloween. We went to Clay. Our thing was to see Jack Harlow. We were all going out like as a girls group. Mona was Hugh Hefner. We were buff like buff bunnies. We were Playboy bunnies. And that was our costume. And then Heidi like had been talking to us and we're like, oh, we're going to Clay. And then y'all decided to go from Baker Street to right. Clay. So, so we, we kind of like merged groups. Yes. Like we're, we're all, you know, friends in different groups and we're all like, hey, we're all going to Clay. Let's mm -hmm. let's all meet up. Yeah. So that was and, th and again, this is the second weekend that Taylor 
has ever really come out that I've ever seen, that we've ever interacted together in yeah. a social setting. Yes. Like we've never, besides the first weekend, right? Yeah. So at Clay, anything, I feel like we were still just- We still just chatted. It was just a great conversation. Like you and I could talk forever. And it wasn't like, there was no like pre like caution of like us flirting with one another. It was just a genuinely good conversation. We had great banter because right. they're both very sarcastic. Because so th that weekend I did not have a date. No. Right. So I was just, you know, a she solo flew dolo. away. She was not there. <laughs> so, so in between the first us time meeting and the yeah. second time, we didn't communicate at all. No, not we a did, single yeah, thing. Right. Nothing. So then we, we, Clay again, just, just chatted kind of casual. Yeah. We probably we took shots, took shots like in a social setting with a lot of people. We took shots with Mona and Paige and right. Heidi, of course, Heidi. And then, shots. and then what happened at the end of the night? Um, you were being absolutely rude and you were like, oh, what are you, Miss Houston? And it was just, oh, that really irks me. And I was like, no, I miss Texas. She's leaving some parts out. So we, we, we took an Uber together. No, this is before the Uber. I'm getting there. Oh, oh don't you worry. You were a little dizzy boy. I was fine. Okay. I was kind of like, I called, I called her Miss Houston, which he apparently did. is. It's, I miss Texas. And I was just like, absolutely not. We're not doing this today. And he kept saying something to me, like we were waiting for our Uber and me and Paige were gonna Uber back with you and you're like, let's party. I just wanted to ride. Yeah, to, dude. I just wanted to ride to Paige's car and Mona's apartment. Cause that's where we were at that night. And I just remember you just saying something. And I was like, I don't even follow you on Instagram. And you were like, you don't follow me. And I was like, hmm, hmm. And it was just like- Wait, what, what, what do you say? What do you do? Hmm. Okay. And it was just like a little thing. And you were like, it just was funny. And then we somehow got into the car finally. I think we made a loop around Clay to find the Uber. Got into the car and Max and I are sitting like in the bucket seats and Paige is in the back. They're called captain's chairs. Captain's chairs and Paige is in the back. And Max and I are talking and I don't know how I said it or why I said it, but I was like, I'm a relationship girl. Like, absolutely not. Like, I don't go on random dates with people. I don't do this. I don't do that. I'm somebody that wants to be in a relationship. If I like, if I find somebody interesting, I was like, will I go to date with them? Yeah, sure. But if I don't feel like I could be with them long term, it's cut off very quickly. And then, and then, then you called me Miss Houston again. Called called you Miss Houston again, and then that and triggered I you. Shoved my foot onto your forehead. So then and pushed you away. Taylor put her high heel onto my forehead. Mind, we were just at a club, so we're there was probably sticky alcohol all over it. That's fine. It's 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 sanitary. So then Paige in the in the very back seat in the third row takes a photo of it's it basically just uh, the the final quarter of Taylor's leg with her foot, and then it on my face. Yes. So we just had this photo. But and you kept saying that whole night, you're like, why are we fighting? We're not fighting. Let's not fight. Stop. I don't want to fight with you. We're not fighting right now. And so I DM'd him. I don't know why I DM'd you. This is at, at four in the morning, by the way. So, so, so we left wait. the bar at 340. The DMs are like four in the morning. It is. Yes, it is. But so, so, I just got home at this point. Okay. So we took the Uber. We're all home. Taylor DMs me this photo. Yes. You send me the photo. And what do you say? I say, this describes our friendship. This describes our friendship. Now I'm snoozing at this point. He's passed out. He's passed probably out. still like full passed out, snoozing, club wear. whatever. And I wake up and you know I, I check I check Instagram and I see a DM from Taylor Kessler and I'm like, Whoop, what is this? What is this? <laughs> is that what you really thought? Yeah. And I I see this photo, <laughs> and I'm like, this girl just slid into my DMs. Mm -hmm. So th that means the first thing you thought of out of getting out of the Uber is like, I want to message him. No, I just sent you the photo because it was funny as shit. Yeah. It was so funny. That's so funny. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was funny. I literally didn't think anything of it because I literally did not know that you were trying to ask me out on a date. No, we're not there yet. Oh, You're sorry. skipping ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, we're just to the point where Taylor slid in my DMs. So, I did slide. So Taylor was the first initiator. And then from there, we, we essentially just exchanged kind of com conversation banter about the photo, about the Uber, mm -hmm. about the night. We kind of just exchanged yeah. conversation. And then- Later in that conversation, now keep in mind, this is like at 10 or 11 a.m., right? Yeah. Um, I, she starts asking kind of like, like, what are you doing for the day? What's your plan? Just having conversation. She's, no, having a conversation or is she planting the seed? I, I was not was planting like, a seed. That's planting the seed. No, because. Oh my God, what are you doing? I'm just like, what's your plans for the day? Cause it's Halloween. Yep. It's my, one of my favorite holidays, but. I did, you You were like, you know, I'm trying to catch like getting margaritas with somebody. And no. I was like, oh, that's cool. That sounds great. 
No. And I literally sent a screenshot. Yes, because I sent a screenshot to Mona and Paige. And I, I was like, what does this, like, what is this? Look. And pa- Mona's like, he's trying to ask you to get margaritas with him. And I was like, no, he's not. Okay, Taylor's a little hammered right now. I'm, well, I'm going to explain a little more in depth. So she's asked, what are you doing today? And I was like, you know, just hanging out, pro- hopefully trying to get some Mexican later and, and a margarita. Yes. And then she's like, oh, like, who are you going to get it with? And I was like, I don't have anyone to get it get it with. I, I, I wish I could have someone to, to go get a margarita with. And that, w- that was me planting the seeds. See, I admit it, Taylor. I admit that I was planting the seeds. I wasn't point. planting any seeds. I can literally promise you there were no seeds trying to be planted at that time. Mm-hmm. Because Paige and Mona were like, you need to go. You need to do it. Like, I need okay, you to so go. Anyway, so th- that was me planting the seed to try to get her to be like, I could, I'll get margaritas with you. But somehow or another, we got to the point of like, do you want to go get margaritas with me? Yeah. And you were like, I could be convinced. I can be convinced. And we set up this date, probably, I guess it was by like about noon. We set it up for in the evening. Yeah, and we I was still m- contemplating at this time if I was gonna make it. <laughs> contemplating, okay. So we went to a little Mexican restaurant called Escalante's, Woo! right? And continue the story from there. Um, we had great conversation. You blew me away. Like I genuinely, like immediately, like we just kind of connected as a human. Like it was like my other half and it was just great conversation. But I also challenged you I didn't challenge, but it just naturally yeah, happened. She, she was like in the, middle margaritas. Of, in the middle of dinner. She's like, I want to battle now. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to challenge you no, to a duel. To the death. duel. So we had four margaritas. Yeah, four margaritas. It makes us sound like raging alcoholics. But keep <laughs> but in mind, they were in four hours. This is a four hour first date. Now, yeah. I don't know about you. I don't, I haven't gone on a lot of dates in my day. No, I but, haven't either. And, but I will tell you, I've never gone on a four hour date at a single restaurant. I don't no. think I've ever had a, 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 it go on that long. And it was just mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, Vegas vacation. I put a dollar and I got a car, put a dollar and I got a car, put a dollar and I got a car. It was like an hour went by, we got a margarita. An hour went by, I got a margarita. An hour went by, I got a margarita. And- We had good conversations. We had great conversation. Do you want to know something funny actually that happened during that, during that dinner? We're sitting outside, someone walks by. This has actually happened a couple of times with Taylor and this is just, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, does this happen a lot? But a, a, a lady walks by and stops us in the middle of our dinner and goes, I just want to say, you're like really pretty. She said, I look like Megan Fox. Yeah. And I was like, I was like. I'm like, who's who does that? I was like, okay. Who, who just com- compliments <laughs> someone's looks? But that was also like, what was funny, what made it even funnier was that somebody was like, oh my God, Max tuning. And so it was like the first time I experienced right. that was with you at dinner. He's like, I watch your videos, like da, 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 da. Yeah, no one ever tells me I'm attractive. I think you're attractive. I tell you every morning. I literally tell you whenever I'm with you, I'm like, you are so handsome every morning that I'm with you. So mm. that's not true. You're a liar. But this, I, it like became a running joke. I was like, you hired somebody to do this. And somebody came up to me and said I was pretty. And you're like, you hired someone to do this. So we had our first date. Yes. And it went. F- Swimming like. F- fantastic. Yes. And w- uh, w- what was the nightcap that night? I drove Max to his car because it was a long walk. <laughs> down the street and Max and I hugged, made- It sounds bad after having four margaritas, but again, this was over four hours. This four was very hours, yeah. Out. Hugged, we made very good eye contact and then we leaned in and kissed each other. We kissed, no, we made out guys. We, <laughs> we, we, we sucked face for a solid, it was a classy make out. It classy. was very I'm talking. Like, I'm talking- tw- I like it neat and clean. Like 20 seconds. Yeah. Like just- It was not like that. <laughs> Absolutely not. No noises mm-hmm. like that were made. But it was. She a was gr- like Max Moore tongue. It didn't say that, but it was a great <laughs> first kiss. It was. It gives me butterflies to this day. It was super cute. It was super cute. I'm not gonna lie. And then from there is really like we, that's like the the history, right? Yeah. Because from that moment on, we we hung out almost. We hung out like the first time, first week. We hung out three times. Four times. Four times. Four times. I thought it was three. Yeah, no, we hung out like four times. Oh, my land time. And on like the third or fourth time, we took a trip together. We went to Galveston. We had a beach day. We took dude. Yeah, I had I got to plan the third date and that was my date. Yeah, it, it, it was. So we kind of took turns planning dates. And what's, what's crazy is after the first date that I had with Taylor mm-hmm. was the last time that I ever had any sort of flirting interaction with anyone of the opposite sex from the moment that we met. And I, I, I I, I don't know. It it never, 
I've never felt the way that I felt after that first date. And I think that's something that kind of like captivated my, me yeah. about you was your, I don't know, like there was just something different about your presence at that, at that first date. That was kind of not only why I'm, why I'm staying here for four hours, right? Yeah. Because I think that, that, that takes a lot already to have like conversation for that, like that long. Um, even though I have a lot of stupid jokes that I can continue a conversation, I love it. but I think Taylor, I think you just kind of like, you kind of like wowed me because of your story when you told me about modeling. And I guess I've never seen or met a girl that has such like a, like, I don't want to say like a pure heart, but I could just like you, you exuded. So I don't have a pure heart. You exuded pureness. Thank you. And I don't know. I don't know if it's the Texas Southern girl thing. No, it's not. No. I mean, I know a lot of girls, but it's, I think it's my th- life and who I am is I genuinely care for people. Yeah. And so I have a very small, like I know a lot of people, I love a lot of people, but like I have a very small circle. I'm very, I don't let a lot of people into who I am, what I do. But like when I care for somebody, I will care for them through and through. I will always put somebody before myself. Why do you think, and now, now keep in mind, so after our first date, mm-hmm. we then hung out multiple times a week for infinity we, yes. we, we we've continued Still to this day we never as far as far as i know i never went on again i never not only flirted with anyone else it was just like i just like i just shut off that side of yeah. like my life it's like I, when we met each other it was done it was I, it. Yeah, I didn't go on any more dates with anyone yeah and I, did, did you go on any more dates no god no you didn't go on any more dates no i had dates people had asked me on dates i had dates lined up mm. but i had dates lined up i did she didn't have any dates lined up no i did but i when i met max it was like no what do you with I, I don't I'm not saying this to like boost my ego or anything. Yeah. But w- why do you think that we connected so well? You're like my other half. We're so similar yet so different. I'm not as crazy as you are like energy wise, but I have the same personality type where it's like I'm wacky and funny and goofy but in my own way. And I think Paige and Mona and Heidi will tell me, like they've always told me, they're like, Max is the kindest human I know. Max is the nicest person I know. That's weird, because I consider myself kind of an asshole. I mean, you can be, I'll say that, but like, you are so kind and you're so genuine. You are a genuine human. And I think it's a God thing that you came into my life the time that you did, because I did not want a relationship at that time. It was not focused on like meeting another person. I was like focused on my journey, who I was, finding what I wanted. And then you came at this random time when we both weren't like looking for somebody. And it was so easy with you. Like I can sit and talk to you for hours and I could open up to you about anything. And my heart was just like at peace. And I've never had that feeling before because I've always gotten nervous. And I've always been like, like I was nervous to go on a date with you. But once that first date was over, I, I was obviously excited to keep going on dates and keep seeing you. But it was like this at peace, like I'm, home type of feeling. And so you were in a relationship, obviously is somewhat, somewhat near us meeting. Before, it right? was a few months. So, so how, how long from when your last relationship ended to when we first uh, had our first date? Like three months. Three months? <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn, I thought it was longer than that. Okay, three, so you four were, months. So that's like newly out, so. I, I wanna say like newly to the fact that like, we stopped talking to one another because we broke up and then it was like a little game for us. Mm. Like Squid Games? Like Squid Games, kind of felt like that. Okay. And so I guess how, because like, how, how do you, uh, from a girl's perspective, going from a relationship three months, you know, do, do you think some people think of like, it's too soon to start getting another scared. relationship? I was scared, I was really nervous about that. Like I was very nervous about that. So why, why do you think that like that short a period of time was like okay to start dating someone else? I didn't. No. I felt horrible. I felt guilty for it. Like for like my obviously other partner, like that's just me as a human. I feel bad for people. I'm very empathetic, but I also like couldn't care because I was genuinely happy because I've never been this happy my entire life. Like you make me laugh and you make me feel at peace that I've never felt before. And this is the first time I've actually done something for myself. And so dating you, like 
I was like, I genuinely like this person. Why would I ever give up this opportunity to be with like somebody who makes me feel this way? Because it's a once in a lifetime feeling. Are are you kind of to the mindset of it doesn't matter the time period? It's be, it's just like the person you met. It, I'm. Like, it's all about like God's planning. God, I know it's like yeah. Drake, weird for Drake you. talks about that. I know it's like not something you talk about, but like for me, God's timeline is way more important and better than my timeline where my timeline i wanted to be single for like another year and a half i didn't want to see or date or be with any hot girl summer Woo! no i didn't really care about that like i just was in the like mindset of bettering myself bettering my futures like all the goals i wasn't allowed to do i wanted to do and wanted to focus on and so it was for me the time for me to focus on myself right and then i met you and I, you push me to be a better person and you push me to the goals that I want and you don't let me fall back on what I want to do and like doubt myself. And I've never had that. Oh, it's crazy. So you went from, I guess when I say, when you, you know, with three months being out of a relationship, I guess that's when the relationship ended, but it could have been the relationship kind of was ending maybe slightly before that. It wasn't like, this is the day, yeah. right? So, um, cause I think it takes a, a while. It's not just one day you wake up and you're like, I don't be this no, person. No, it, it, it's exactly what happened. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I kind of prayed about it. I was like, God, if this isn't meant for me, please let me know. I woke up the next day, hit me like a ton of bricks. Okay. Well, anyway, so you, short period of time, but for me, I hadn't been in a relationship for seven years. That was my biggest fear. Right. And, and, and so, so what are your thoughts about someone like myself? Cause I, I feel like someone like me who has not been in a relationship for a long time, mm -hmm. like there's something I said, and I hope people don't take this the wrong way, but every time that I would maybe see an extremely, really, really cool, really, really attractive yes. girl that's single, first thing that goes on in my mind would be, there's a reason why she's single. That's so wrong. I could say the same thing about you. I know, but what I'm saying, I'm like, I'm like, you know, I guess I had this negative mindset that like, they're like. What was different about me then? You just, I don't know. You Because like, I wasn't single no. shortly before. No, I, I guess I didn't really care. But but I guess the, what, the reason I say that, of, that was my mindset of, you know, that's why I would never pursue anyone because I'm like, there's a reason why she's single. And I wouldn't think of like, it could have been the other person in the relationship that was is the reason why yes. they broke up. I just been like, you know, she's going to break up with me. She's going to like, you know, again, mm -hmm. I had this mindset. She's going to ruin my life. Um, okay. And you changed all that for me. So I think maybe... Was, did you have a, a specific mindset of uh, kind of like the opposite of like, why has this guy been single for so long? Because yeah. that's probably a question. Oh, I, well, cause I had known girls that had gone on dates with you and I had heard what happened or. It's probably not common to, to have some, like, I think a seven year single hiatus is yes. a long, that's a long. It's concerning. That's concerning, yes. So I, I thought I was almost I just, undateable because you're I You're not I thought, undateable cause you're a great human. But you also are very stubborn. You're very picky. You, there are certain things you said that you don't connect with somebody. You just shut it off, which is great. And I admire that because in the same way. I like to think that I'm like a black stallion. You can try to break me, but you're not. I'm just going to buck you off. I tamed you. You did tame me. You're like the end of the movie. You yeah. Tame, you tame me. But I, so I was very nervous about it. And Paige and Mona kind of had to like swindle me into it mm -hmm. to go on a date with you. So I was like, this guy does not want to relate. Like, and it was even a conversation after our first day. I was like, this guy does not want a relationship. He is not a relationship type. I was like, I'm not going to do this because I don't want to get hurt. Because I, I was like, this guy is going to hurt me. Like, why would I put my, I've already gone through heartbreak once, just re obviously before this. Right. But like, why would I want to go through it again by somebody that I care about? I was like, I don't like that. Like, I like had walls up at that point. But Mona was like, even the, that night that we went out to Clay, Mona looked at me, she's like, I always thought you and Max would like get along or like like each other, or, like work really well together, but I just didn't think he was your type. And I was like, I don't have a type, Mona. Like if I genuinely connect with somebody, then I do. Hmm. But I, yeah, I was terrified at first. I was very skeptical because I was like, when is the other shoe gonna fall type situation? But it what? never did. When is the other shoe gonna fall? Yeah, like, cause like if another shoe drops, it's, a, it's an analogy. We'll work on it. We'll Google later. Yeah, I don't know what the, I don't know what that means, but okay. So you took you took a chance on me. Yeah, kinda, right. I did. I did. How do you think it's going? Perfectly. We just celebrated our six month anniversary. I know. We've been a, we talked for about a month, and then I asked you out. Mm -hmm. Do you think that I waited the proper amount of time, or did you? No, I did. I was happy. I w I even told Paige. I was like. I don't want him to ask me out too soon because I was always terrified that 
something would go wrong or you'd be like, ah, I don't want to be in a relationship or ah, this isn't what I want. So I was always like, let's push it off as far as we can until we're ready to like genuinely be in a committed relationship with one another. Right. And, you know, being in a relationship with people who are kind of like, I, I hate like talking about like myself in a third person of like, like we are like yeah. public figures, right? We, we, I, I have a social media following, you know, you. Miss have, Texas, yeah. Correct. You have your. My world. Yes, your, your, your world. Um, I, I want to kind of dive into a couple questions that people asked us on my Instagram oh and it kind of ties in perfectly. So like, what did you think, like, what's the hardest part of when we started dating and now, now that we're dating, um, but that we're so public about our relationship in terms of putting everything out on the world because, you know, relationships, there's a lot of private intimate yes. moments and especially, you know, not only just being social media influencers, I'll call us, right? Yeah. Of just, put, you already put yourself on the world, but I'm kind of on another level. Like yeah. when you found out about my profession, I'm, I'm assuming you knew that I made YouTube videos. Yeah, I just didn't watch. before. Okay, beforehand. <laughs> now she watches all of them. I do. But I, I guess, what, what were your thoughts about going into a relationship with me knowing that like this guy puts his, his, whole, life. his whole life out and if for, you know, God forbid that, you know, something doesn't work out, mm -hmm. all of our memories and all of our things are gonna be publicly out there, not just a, I can delete these Instagram photos really fast, right? I mean, I've always been a very private person. I don't like to share like that part of my life and relationships and like being Miss Texas, I really wasn't supposed to or allowed to. Right. So I was very skeptical about that. But I knew with you, I was like, he'll respect anything I want. You respect me wholeheartedly, which I admire. And, and it was something I was very uncomfortable with at first, but I think throughout time, obviously in the videos and now I've opened up a lot to it, but we don't share every moment, which I admire. Like the moments that are intimate to us that like are special to us, like there's a part that's shown, but it's not all put out into the world. And like, we don't really like put that part out, which I, I like, but it's okay. Like I, I'm not afraid to share like our life and relationship with others. Cause I feel like you know, there's a reason we do it. Like whether it helps somebody or it inspires somebody, I think our story and like us being two different types of people, like not yeah. like we are very similar, but like at the same time, like we are very different in like certain sections of life that it could help somebody later. So what do you think the hardest part about being in a, such a public relationship? If it does some for God, some reason like does not work out for us. I don't know. I ain't deleting those YouTube videos. No, I know you're not because we've got some good views. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I worry about the scrutiny I will receive from your followers. And I think that's the biggest fear for mine. Like I, like even if it, we don't break up for like you cheat on me or I cheat on you or da, 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 whatever reason, like if we just genuinely were like, you know, this is just isn't our path anymore. Like this isn't the plan for us. Like it's just not working. Yep. I worry for what's going to happen, like yeah, what they're going to say to me, because they're a little tough sometimes. Yeah, no, it's real annoying, honestly. The, it's yeah, not annoying. Y'all are great. We love y'all. No, I mean, I mean, the, the scrutiny of, I mean, the, I was scared when you were going to announce me. I was like, I don't like, I don't know if these people are going to be nice to me, if they're going to be mean to me. What, yeah. And there are some people that are absolute assholes, and I'll say it to your face now. You're an asshole. Damn. You know who you are, but like there are so many people that support us and love us, and that is crazy. So you think the, the scrutiny of, of the public eye uh -huh. is the tough part, especially yeah, because, because people assume, cause they don't yeah. know. Like yeah. we, if we, if we were to ever, please God, don't ever break up with me. But if we were to break up, like, and we had like a good like breakup and it was like, a, you made a video you're like, you know, just Batman and I just separated. She flew the coop mm -hmm. type situation. There are going to be some people that are just gonna tear me down. Yeah, and, and and YouTube's tricky with like my world because even I didn't showcase you my videos for a certain period of time and it kind of pulls this like double issue when I first yeah. did that because it not only, I'm sh I'm sharing my entire life but now I'm hiding something from the world. world yes. And it's, it's more of a, I, I feel like this may, might sound extreme, but I, I was protecting, I felt like I was trying to protect you, you because, did. because, and I admire because that. once you, I bring you into this world, you can't get out. Right. It's, <laughs> I'm saying like, once you bring in, like yeah. it, it's, it opens up this whole new can of worms of 
explaining things being you're a part of my life now right yeah and but also on the, on the opposite side me trying to protect you i feel like there might have been a certain point when not like oh i, I want to be on youtube videos but it's there might have been a thought of like like why is he hiding me is, is he ashamed of me does he not want to was there any sort i never had that i never had that like assumption or had that feeling i admired that you took so much time with our soft launch like a genuine soft launch. our soft launch because it was a soft launch it wasn't like quick fast to the point like you know in past relationships i i had a lot of like in not insecurity but it's like i never like i was never allowed to be seen i was always just kind of like this like side figure and like I don't want to say like they did care, my relation past relationships they did genuinely care about me but like the way you cared about me and you put me first in that and you didn't because yeah. like, we didn't know what was going to happen we didn't know what people were going to say we didn't know what the followers going to think like the way that you just genuinely cared and you you wanted to build our relationship before anything yeah and and, and it made I, us and i like if it was too soon if people were going crazy and people said mean things or did weird things like I don't know what would have happened. Like the fact that we had such a strong bond at that time, yeah. I think was important. Yeah, and it's it almost it it it, it inevitably ine it's an inevitable. It's inevitably I had to bring you in because mm -hmm. at a certain point, if I film my entire life and I start spending tons of time with you, yeah. it would be almost impossible for me to do my job properly of logging my life and cut you out. You right? calculatedly did a lot. It was kind of crazy because it was kind of funny because it was like small little things that I would like, you, it'd be my hand or my hair or my back. Like it was like you slightly put me in there, but I never questioned like, oh, he doesn't want me to like be like seen. He's a, like ashamed of me. It was not that. Like I never had those insecurities or those feelings. Like I've never felt insecure with you ever, which is like crazy. Like you don't make me feel insecure. And I've always felt insecure in relationships, but you do not. Like not insecurity in the sense of like, Oh, he's gonna cheat on me. Like I never cared about that. Like I don't. It's funny to me. But like I feel equal to you and I've never felt equal to it like a partner before. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I well, I, I think just our uh kind of expansion into the social media realm yeah. was it's it's a, a huge one for me because not only have people never seen you in relationship and me in relationship right a, an, an actual serious a fallen one soldier so this is also people also are also in kind of like this protective mode of yeah this girl's gonna break max's heart they like, this still girl, think like, that yeah and it's you know it's just something that most people are very welcoming to the people that i would bring in my mm -hmm. life view but then there's also the kind of people that are the negative which is hard for me to kind of explain to you of like there's going to be people that are going to be mean to you for no reason and make you feel a certain way. And they're going to be people that follow me and there's nothing that I can really do about it. Like yeah. there's nothing that I can do to protect you because I can't control what these people say or, or do oh, or think. But I think, I don't think you could have dated a better person because <laughs> in pad, not, not like that, but like in pageants in the world that I am, I have received some of the worst comments. Like people all over the world scrutinize me for the yeah. way I look, the way I talk, my beliefs, my values, whatever it is. And so I've had the worst things said to me already. So at that point I didn't care. I was like, nothing can hurt me besides yeah. Max. You were the only person that could hurt me. I don't have any plans to, so Thank I hope you're, I hope you're fine with a, a no hurt type of relationship. Perfect. Love you now, forever. This, this episode's getting more on the longer side, but I, I, do, I do, I do have a couple more questions. Though. I think, I think we'll go we'll quick. Be, yeah. So these are just kind of some, about us relationship questions love it why do i call you batman um i don't really know i think because we saw batman together we both love batman and it just kind of came a running joke of being like oh, i'm batman and you'd be like i'm also batman and i just like became our thing and i love batman batman's one of my favorite movies i'm batman i'm batman <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I, I call her. I call her Batman because we saw Batman and we started saying that I'm Batman. And we have her little squishmallow bat. We do have a squishmallow bat. It's it's the like the fifteenth throw pillow on my bed at the her moment. Her name is Emma. <laughs> Emma. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's that's the 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 backstory behind Batman. Um, how do we split? How how do we go about with like finances in terms of like food and like stuff Just like that? Random. Yeah, it is very. It's random. very random, like very sporadic for both of us. I I think. I'm, and again, I feel like if a lot of guys maybe hear this, they'd they go with like the, the simp, right? But I'm in the mindset of, I, I totally think 
and agree mm-hmm. with sharing costs in certain things, certain things, right? Yes. Certain aspects of life. But I also, I also am a firm believer of um, like on, fir- on on first dates mm-hmm. and just like dates that yeah. that I, I I I want to pay. Like it's just a man thing. Yes. And and but I also never. I always want to pay, but I also never want like someone to expect yeah. expect that everything is going to be paid for because um, I don't know. Like I, I, I think there's things like where dinner. I'm like, I'll grab at this, or yeah. you grab that. It's not like we don't expect either one of us to pay for certain things, and it just I think it's just natural. Like where I'm like, no, I'll grab this tonight, or I'll do this, or like one or the other. Yeah, I just I, we don't think about those things. Yeah, and, and the. And one thing that I always appreciate about Taylor that I, I've, I've told a story forever ago about like this kind of like nightmare date I went on where I went on multiple dates with a girl and went to like these really expensive restaurants and mm-hmm. she never said thank you. And and that's like really, literally the only thing that I look for yeah. of, of like me paying is that like someone's like- Have ever not said thank you? No. Okay, thank no, you. No, it, it is like, just like I, I, you saying like just thank you is, is, is me showing that like you're not- expecting that when the bill comes that I'm just going to pay for everything. And to be honest, like I, the reason I think I l- not like paying, I, I don't like paying for anything ever, <laughs> but I'm saying I don't mind it is, is more of like, I'm at a point in my life where the financial aspect of us going to dinner is not a burden on me yeah. at that point. And so I'd rather just make that not a conversation of the, of the evening. And, and it, I just want to get it out of the way. Mm-hmm. So I don't want it to become a conversation of like, like finances to come yeah. up in that. So, um, but Taylor offers to pay for a lot of meals when we go to get food. She picks up a lot of like stuff at Target to cook for dinner, and she yeah. like buys a lot of the stuff. But yeah, I'd say most I of about all the throw pillows. Yeah, exactly. So um, I'd say most of the time I'm I'm picking up the check. I think that's what I want to do, and I I, I should do. Um, but Taylor pays for plenty of meals and things outside work. Yeah. I'm talking, talking about meals specifically, but, but uh, like just just a lot more. Our lives, we don't we don't question if like who's getting the bill tonight. It's just like one of us do. Yeah. And it's not like a big deal to us, I think. And I mean, in the S- same situation, I'm not like, if I have to pick up a deal, like we went to dinner for your podcast. Like, it's like, I'm doing that for you. Like, that's me yeah. for you. I'm not going to ask you to pay for that if I told you to go to a nice dinner with me. Yeah, and, and it's, I, it's really just semantics at that point. It, like, it doesn't matter. It's like irrelevant. No. Like, it's, it's just... It, it is what, what it is. is. Um, what are your thoughts on me filming in public? It's funny. <laughs> you think it's funny? <laughs> there are certain times where I'm like, oh my God. And it's like, but I'm not ashamed of it. You're my boyfriend. I'm like, he's mine. That's, that's mine. What about what about that I, you'll notice I'm, I'm pretty wacky. You're wacky. I'm wacky guy, right? Yeah. But on YouTube, you could probably see some sort of, like I, I turn it up a little bit of a yes. notch, right? I, uh-huh. I kind of, I, even to be honest, guys, like the whole like shot thing, I don't think these are good at all, but I, I exaggerate how bad it is. Yeah. And like a lot of things on my YouTube, you are I cinematic. Yes. I am a very animated person. I kick things up a notch. So what do you, does it ever like bother you of like no. stopping so annoying? Like, like, or do you like kind of accept it? I accept it for what it is and, and I accept f- for you, you, for who you are. Um, there's times like when we were in Italy, there was like, I was like, you can do that because it's disrespectful to like who they are and like what they believe. But I would well, never what you believe. Know. I wasn't talking about religion. She's no, talking, I'm talking she's, about beliefs, but like she's talking about it. At, at one point, I wanted to make a Family Guy reference of me speaking Italian doing yeah, the so Family Guy rude. reference. You can't do that now. <laughs> Not in this day and age. You can't do that. I think the fa- I think the Family Guy reference because I think people like appreciate. Italians would not respect that. <laughs> Okay. I'm just trying to help you. Yeah, she helps me. But but for the most part, she understands it. And I think, I think it's funny. I think there's a balance of like, again, I, I'm 32, I'm like a 32 year old man child, but as weird as it sounds, I still can re- read the room and respect. And I kind of know when the boundaries are a little bit too much. And I, I know when to kind of film, w- when to kind of be a little more wacky without it being disrespectful, rude, um, inconsiderate to people around me. I, I think I'm very understanding of the, the environment that I'm in and I can kind of like judge how I should film, how long my clips need yeah. to be, what I, what I can and can't say, how loud I can be. So, you know, sometimes I probably break those a little bit, but I, I try for the most part to be very, um, you're funny. Yeah. I just try to be knowledgeable of the room and without em- embarrassing her. The problem is when I have to refilm something. Oh God. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> it's very rare. But when yeah. it happens, I'm like, we're redoing this again. Just please go with it. What do you think of, our age difference. So Taylor's 25, I'm 32. I'm very mature for my age. 
But I've You're always, 26. Don't you dare put that on me yet. I still got a month. I literally have one month. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, birthday is July. Okay, yeah. I have one month, exactly one month to today till I'm 26 okay, years so, old. Okay, so what do you think about the, the age gap? I love it. I like, I, I don't want to say, I don't, seven. Seven, what? Seven. Four, seven, 32 minus 26. 25. You're turn. Tw- You're turning thirty three. You're blowing people's eardrums out. Right <laughs> You're turning thirty three. Okay, yeah, okay. So seven year age gap. I, I don't ever look for. I don't ever mind it. I I think that Taylor is extremely mature for mm-hmm. her age. Um, and I like that you're older because guys my age just don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Whatever yeah. it is, they just don't do it for me. She's talking about sex. I'm not talking about sex, but just <laughs> maturity. <laughs> um, for that too, I guess. Right, and, and it, to be honest, I, I think that I think like the age thing. The, I would prefer to date someone that's younger than me rather than my age because I, I think you're very, you're very, um, like you understand my life right now in terms yes. of my, my, my job and my work and understanding of like settling down time. And I'm not ready for that, that exact moment. 35. And I f- 35 is a great, yeah. But w- when, if I was to date someone that's my age, they're going to get to that point that I'm not ready for yeah. a lot sooner than I think maybe someone who's your I mean, age is. I am, I can't say that because I'm somebody that wants to be settled down. I want that in my life, but I also have a lot of goals that I want to accomplish. And, you know, I think it's just like at our time when it happens, it happens. But also you told me our first date, I'll never forget it. You said I would never date somebody younger than you. You're literally at the cutoff of the youngest person. I'll date. Yeah, no, I I would not date someone. I think Taylor's the, perfect the, the youngest. I am the youngest. I'm always the youngest. I'm the youngest in our group. 25 going on 26. You can be mature. If you're under, if you're under 25, immature. I had just turned 25. All right. Well, you know, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, so we, we spoke about, spoke about kind of like, you know, settling down, yeah. right? What are your thoughts? I, I, people ask, so many people ask this question. I know about, exactly what's about to hit me. Uh, what are your thoughts on kids and marriage? I am somebody that if I'm going to date someone, I look towards marriage. I think marriage is a very sacred bond and I think it's incredibly important. It was actually something that we kind of like not bickered about, but like I was like, "Mm, don't like that before we started dating. You said something about marriage that you didn't really like believe in it, but your, your mind can be changed. And I don't like that because I think it's a very intimate, sacred bond between two people. And it's very important to me. And I want to be married. Obviously it's like, not my goal, but like, that's what a relationship is. Like, that's the end goal for why, me. Why, why, why do you want to be married? Like, well, why, why is marriage something that you feel is important over just being with someone without? Because it's a bond. It's just like. Do you feel like someone could have a bond without being married? Yes, but it's different. It takes you deeper. It doesn't change the relationship in any form. It, it makes it harder, obviously, but like at the same time, marriage is something that connects two people wholeheartedly, intimately, in the eyes of the world and the eyes of God. And to me, that's just the way I was raised. And, you know, my parents have been married for 36 years. And, you know, I, I know that like there are struggles and my, my parents don't get along all the time, yeah. but they're the funniest people I know. But at the same time, like their love for one another, it's a pact between two people to be with each other through sickness and through health and that it's important to stand by your partner. And I think that's, it's just, the intimacy and the love and respect for one another to do. Yeah. I think that's important. I, I, when I met Taylor, I was very, I don't see the point of it. And to be honest, until I met Taylor, I, you've changed my perspective on a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And even opening my eyes to marriage is something that no one's ever been able to do. I do want to spend my life with you, obviously. Wow. Wow. And what are your thoughts on, uh, children? on children? I love kids. You know that. Right. You see me whenever I see a baby. Do you like, want to have kids? Yes. How many kids do you want? Um, goal is three or four. Four? I, I want two boys and one girl. That's three. That's three. But if I have another. So twins run in my family. My mom's a twin. My grandfather's a twin. My great grandpa is like a triplet. Mm. So that runs in my family and it skips a generation. And so it's like me or my sister at this point. I'm like, you know, maybe I should wait for her to have kids first just to see if she has the twins and what happens. But yeah, I I went three or four. 
I only want one girl though. I want one little mini me and the rest can be boys. This is just for the people and not for my knowledge at all, but when is an ideal time for you to have kids? Um, I'm only 25. So I'd probably say 20, 29, 30. Okay. That was just for the the audience listening. That yeah. wasn't for any, <laughs> like, well, that wasn't you, for anyone. Well, you told me, you're like, I don't want to have kids for da, 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 da. I don't even know. I've told Taylor. And this is, I, I think when you get in a relationship, it's actually tricky because I think that there's important things that are, these are like my, I'm not budging on these things. And then there's also, I love this person. I will adjust these things for that person. It's hard to kind of balance of the, it's, it's hard to balance those, right? Yeah. Because it's like, what do you give up for the other person? But what do you also not break your ground of what you believe in, um, you know, for someone else, right? There, I feel like there's like that balance yes. with that. And I've told Taylor many, many times that I, I'm not ready. And it's more of like a, not of like, this is what's gonna happen. So d like, don't even think about it deviating, but it's more of like a, to put something out. So I think later down the line, a relationship- It doesn't become an issue. It doesn't, it, because like I was, I people have been very upfront from, from the beginning yeah. and hopefully no one ever thinks of like, I thought you were kidding. I thought you said a very funny joke. I wrote it down <laughs> in my diary later. I laughed. No, and, and I, I've told Taylor that I was like, hey, you know, for me, 35 is probably an ideal time of when I want my life to kind of slow down. And until that point- Is that having kids or getting married? That's for the people, not for me. That's for the people to know. <laughs> <laughs> I think thir 35 would be when I would be open to the idea of little little ones running around. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's good because marriage should become before the children. Mm. Just well, so you know. Okay, that was information for the, uh, the audience. People. <laughs> That's the more. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't want them to be little bastard children out of no, wedlock. You would be a great father. You'd still take care of them. I have a big uh, fluffy child at the moment. His name is his name is. He's dude. the only kid I want to take care of right now. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Keep thinking that. Um, okay, again, this is getting super super long. I want to wrap up with one. I'm scared. Final question. Okay. Who said, "I love you first." <laughs> it was Max. Just kidding. It was me. <laughs> um, I said it multiple times. He never said it back. It Taylor, was Taylor would very be kind of, annoying. Taylor would be kind of saucy. I think the first time that I saw her mouth, I love was you. Was it at Heidi's birthday? No, we, we were we were in an Uber down somewhere. We we're going I don't to meet this. people out. Yeah, kind of, we'd already <laughs> taken shots beforehand. We're in, a, in an Uber and we're we happened to like look at each other in the back seat and she mouths like <laughs> she mouthed, I love you, like just whispering it. And I go, what? She goes, nothing. <laughs> and then immediately like turns back to the car. And I, I knew what she said, right? Yes. And did you know that you loved me or did you have any inkling or feeling? I'm not gonna lie. Like I was probably like a month, probably even less into the relationship when I knew that I was in love with you. Oh, I could tell you like the exact day that I knew I was in love with you. <laughs> well, I don't want to get super sappy on the people, but opening up, and saying, I, I I don't think I've said I love you to someone in, again, like seven, like seven or eight yeah. years. So it's very- It's a very important it, word. It, it is, and I wanted, and I, and I knew that I knew it, but I held off for saying it for so long. Mm -hmm. It was something that I, I knew that you were ready to, to say, I love you. Yes. And I don't think there was like a time, a time period of like, you need to wait this amount of time. I think when you're ready, um, when you feel it, right? It's mm -hmm. not just like, I'm, I, I I want to say it because it makes her happy. It's like, I believe it. And I'd already been believing it, but I, I didn't say it even though I knew she was ready. I, cause I, I held back as much as I could, but when I got drunk or I would drink, it just came out. Cause it's she, how I felt. She, she would say it and then like, kind of like covered up real fast. Right. But to be honest, I'll, I'll tell the, 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 the story of the <sighs> first time that we said, I love you to, to, to each other. I got sassy. There was a day when <laughs> I don't know, I just something kind of felt away. And I feel like, I guess here's what I thought. And we've never actually talked about this. No. So the people are getting an exclusive here. It was a day that I, f I knew something was off. Now, Taylor and I don't really argue at all. The, the biggest argument we've got in at the moment is when we were traveling in Italy and running on <laughs> two hours of sleep at five in the morning. And we were starting to get like really like bickery towards each other about like luggage and stuff like that. I'm like, come on, get, get the passports out. Like that was the, you know, 5 a.m., two hour sleep yeah, snappy, snappy yeah. in, in a different country is the only count. time. But there was a day that I felt like you were just, something was off and I kind of like knew what it was. And I, and I felt like, I was like, I think that she doesn't think that I'm ever going to yeah, tell you that you I were. love you. I didn't think you were. I didn't think you knew that you were. And it was like, 
I felt like I was alone in that situation. And I've been in that situation before where it's like, I've loved somebody before and like, they kind of held it over my head that they didn't want to say it yeah. until a specific time. And it's like, how can you do that to somebody that you right. care about and, and, deeply? And, and for some reason, I just, I felt this throughout the day. Like it was, she was just like, kind of like, not really, she was just quiet. Not really like, t it was just, the, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I just felt like something was off and I, I knew exactly what it was. And it yes. was just something that day was like, I, I didn't want to pressure you to say it though either. Right. That was like the biggest thing. I was like, I want you to say it at your time and you're like, whenever you want to say it. Cause I've said it three times at this point. Yeah. All drunk. But it's me. all been covered up. It's never it's been like, all been I love drunk. you. Why don't you love me? Like, why don't you say it? Like yeah. we never talked about it. So anyway, the day I just, I knew something was going on and I, and I knew it was like this, I don't know. I felt it that that was the reason, the thing you were upset about. And I started feeling kind of bad because I was like, I, I'm ready to say it, but it's, I've, it's like, I've, I haven't said it in seven years. Like it's never left my, my lips. Right. So yeah. it was like, this is a huge deal for me. You know, I haven't, I haven't been in love in almost a decade. Right. And I just felt that was the reason. And I, and I was like, oh my God, like I might lose this girl because I'm, I'm such a little baby, like to, to say something that I feel, but I, I didn't know how to say it. Cause I haven't said you it forever. Have lost, you would not have lost me at that time. Well, anyway, I, I knew something was wrong and we went to bed and we're laying there and she's kind of facing, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm big spooning it. Well, I, you skipped a step. You were upset about something that had happened. Like you're just have, putting a lot of pressure on yourself. And we had a lot of intimate talks at this point in like time that with things that you were going through, like just with social media in your life and just like your, what you do and just your world, like business owner or whatever. And I was like, you know what? I love you regardless. And that's what I said to you before we went to bed. And then we went to sleep. Right. Yeah. So, so and okay. I said that yeah. to you as not as bait, but kind of of being okay, like, you say, I, I want you to know that I love you. Yeah, she said, I lo love you regardless. Yes, I, I I did leave out that part. And we're laying in bed, and she's we're fa she, I'm she's facing away from me. I'm, I'm again, I'm big spooning it at the moment, mm -hmm. and probably we're laying there for a couple minutes, and I just say, I love you too. And dude, what's funny? That was my reaction. I was like, Yeah, she literally like. <laughs> I was like, I like. She literally paused up. Yeah, she like <laughs> went from like curled up in a ball of ass and goes, Ooh. <laughs> and then, and then she immediately turned over and, um, you know, that was the that that was the first time that we said, I love you to each other. And it it felt really good. It felt right. I I I said something that I believed. I believed for a cry. long time, <laughs> and just. I've, n I've never felt the way that I do about you with anyone else. And I'm sure a lot of people say that about everyone. No, I know. But it's just- And everyone's like, oh, it's only been six months. But no, like it's so different. No, t Taylor and I, I don't know. We, we, we have something really, really special. And- I'm on crime. <laughs> <laughs> Stop well, I'll it. tell you one thing, I'm never gonna let it go. And I think that we're gonna have a, a, a beautiful life together. Yeah. And I think I was waiting. Perfect timing. For seven years to meet you. And, um, you know, the people on the podcast can hear it, that I do love you very, very much. And I also want to thank you for coming on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I, yeah, but no, I, no, I, love I don't want to get super, super sappy on here, but I, I've never felt it the way that I do about anyone else. And I'm so glad that we met and every single day with you has been an adventure, even if we don't go do anything and it's memorable and we laugh together and we have very intimate talks and they're not just very surface level, they go very deep about whether it be family or thoughts, um, things in the past, uh, you know, the, the way that you help me de-stress during the day, I've never had that with anyone to, not just I can come home and vent to you about it, but I come, I come home and at the end of the day, you, you are interested in about my day. You're interested yeah. in, in why I'm stressed out. And, um, I don't think I could have asked for a better partner in life. No, I agree. The same thing. It's like, you are the most supportive person I've ever met, like, especially with the world that I'm in and the life that I have. It's, it's a, it's a hard task. It's not an easy task to have, but that's what's like, partners are and relationships are is that you support and love one another through everything and I will always be there to support you through every situation and I'll never let you fall. 
And if you do fall, I'll giggle at you for a second and then I'll pick you up and <laughs> dust you off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this has been the longest I'm so sorry, y'all. No, I thought it was good. I don't. I never want to stop talking to you. Talk, I know talking that's to you, so. probably the issue in the situation. <laughs> we could just talk for hours. So I want to thank you for being on Anytime. the show. I hope people enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment down below. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, hit the thumbs up button. If you're hit watching it on, on any, yeah, the, ooh, the notification bell. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a thing. There's so many people. There's We have more people watching that are subscribed. You need to subscribe. If, Aren't you subscribed? On, I know. On any podcast listening platform, make sure you, I don't know what they do, leave a review, thumbs it up. Thumbs it up. Give, whatever. Give a few stars. I'll be back. Yeah. That'll be it. That'll, That'll be, be a wrap. It. Thank Woo! you guys so much for tuning in to episode number five of Don't Be Sour. New episodes every single Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you, Miss Taylor Kessler, for being on today. Power bump. Power bump. Woo. Love you. I love you more. Bye. Uh, bye. <laughs> Could give me a kiss now. You want to smooch? Yeah. Across the table?